Hey, welcome to Blender Tutor. My name is Tom, and today we're going to be going over how to bring a Minecraft world into Blender 2.9 and beyond. The two things you'll need right off the bat are Blender, which you could go to blender.org slash download to download the newest version. At the time of this recording, that is 2.91. Then you'll need to go download Mineways if you don't already have it. I would recommend getting the newest version. And that will be Mineways 7.20 at the time of this recording. I'll have a link for both of those in the description below. The last thing you'll need, and this is important, is you will need the Java edition of Minecraft. So you cannot use the version of Minecraft from the Windows Store. Once you have all three of those ready to go, we can get started. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the Java version of Minecraft and create a new world. I would recommend turning on creative mode. Obviously, it's just easier to get around. You don't have to worry about dying or surviving. Of course, if you already have a saved Minecraft file that has a model or a world that you've built that you want to export, you don't have to worry about this part. So you can just jump to the next section. If you're looking for something interesting, I would check out some Minecraft seed websites that just have a bunch of interesting seeds. That's what I did for this tutorial. Once you've created your world, uh, just explore and find some interesting areas that you want to export. Or of course, like I said, if you already have something you want to export, don't worry about this part. And once you've found something you like, I would recommend putting down some kind of bright color. Like I use the, the red mushroom blocks just as points of interest. So when we're looking at this in Mineways, which is a top down view, you'll be able to find the part you want to export a little easier. And yeah, once you are happy with your selection, just go ahead and save your world and exit Minecraft. Next up, we're gonna open up Mineways. And the first thing you'll do is you'll go up to File, Open World, and that should automatically show you your list of Java Edition Minecraft worlds. So just select the one you want to export and it'll load up in Mineways. To make things easier, you can jump to a few different locations such as the spawn point in the map or where the player was when you saved. So I usually jump to where the player was. Then you could kind of zoom in and out of the map in Mineways with the middle scroll wheel and just look for your points of interest if you added those. Once you know the section you want to export, you could just right click and drag over the map to highlight a square or rectangle section of the map. That's basically the part that it will end up exporting as a model. Once you've done that, just go up to File, Export for Rendering and then save it to a location that you're gonna easily be able to find. I would recommend just your desktop or something. Once you have the export options open, you really don't need to change too much in here. I just generally use the default settings that it chooses. The one thing I always do is I turn on the delete floating blocks uh, checkbox, which that way it kind of automates the process for you. If you just have rando blocks floating around, it'll delete them for you when it's exporting. So once you've exported, it'll take a few seconds. You could close up Mineways. And the next thing we're gonna do is open up Blender. And you can just click anywhere on the screen to close the splash screen. First thing we could do is just highlight our block and our light and just delete those just to clean up the scene a little bit. And before we do anything else, I would recommend just saving your project file. Just that way, if Blender crashes later, at least you'll have a file to recover. So to import your Minecraft world, just go up to File, Import, and then choose wavefront and then in parentheses dot obj and then just locate the file you exported hopefully it's just on your desktop or something and make sure to select the dot obj file you could ignore the dot mtl which is the material file because that will be imported automatically by blender once you select import it will take a few seconds or sometimes as long as a minute to import the file just depending on how big the file was that you exported and how slow or fast your computer is so once it shows up in your 3D viewport, you can move around the scene by holding down the middle mouse button and kind of rotate around. And if you want to see things textured, you can go up to the top right of your 3D viewport. And there are four balls in the top right corner. You'll choose the one second to the right that is the, the viewport shading mode. And that'll basically just show a preview of your scene with the textures applied, but it will just have generic lighting. It's not going to be what your scene actually looks like when you render it. So you can move around the viewport to find an interesting angle for your camera. And once you've found something you like, you could just hit Control Alt Zero on the numpad and that'll automatically bring the camera to your view. 
Now, when you're looking through the camera, the world might look a little cut off in the camera view. So all you all had to do is go to the camera tab on the right and then bring up the clip end from 100 up to like two to 3000. You could also click N while you're in the 3D viewport, which is the main view. That'll bring out a toolbar on the right. You could go to the view tab and then click camera to view, which will basically, it'll lock the camera to your view. So as you're rotating around the scene and you could scroll in and out on the middle mouse button to kind of move forward and backward. You could also control the focal length of the lens in the camera tab. So if you want a wider angle or a super tight shot, you can change that there as well. Now you might've noticed by default when the, when the model gets brought into Blender, the textures on it look blurry. And that is because Blender is basically applying a filter to the textures to try to smooth them out. And because of that, it basically ruins any type of pixel art in textures. So we will be fixing that, but we'll need to do it manually. We can also easily bring in a sky texture, which will help light the scene. And if you need to find a good sky texture environment, um, you can go to hdrihaven.com. I'll have that in the description below. But that website is a great resource with tons of free HDRI skies. So I definitely recommend checking that out if you need one. So once you have a texture that you wanna add, go to the world tab on the right, click on the color tab and add an environment texture. Now you could click the open button and select your HDRI that you wanna bring in. If everything turns pink all of a sudden, don't worry, that is just what Blender does when it's looking for a texture and it can't find it, it just turns it pink. Once you add in your sky, go to the shading tab, uh, which is at the top of the window, and add in a texture coordinate and a vector mapping node so we can reposition our sky easily. To add those nodes, you just click Shift A and you could either find them if you know where they are or you can just click the search field and type in the nodes that you're looking for. And then once you've added both of those, you'll need to plug those nodes into each other. So in the texture coordinate node, uh, take the generated node and plug that into the vector input of the mapping node, and then take the vector output of the mapping node and plug that into the texture node. Now you'll be able to rotate the sky around on the Z axis to kind of just find a better looking sky that you want. You could also bring in a sun by hitting shift A in the 3D view and adding a lamp. And then you could rotate the sun and give it a color to give your scene a little better look. Now we're going to actually fix these blurry textures. So while in the shading tab, look at the outliner in the top right of your window. And that's going to basically have a list of all the objects in the scene. You can select your Minecraft model and hit the drop down next to it. And that will show all of the materials that are attached to it. And unfortunately, we will have to select every individual texture and fix them. So to fix the blurry texture, just click on each individual material. So stone is at the top. You can click one of those and it should show the nodes in the bottom half of your screen. So to turn off the texture filtering, you'll just click on each texture node in your material setup. And where it says linear, you're gonna click the drop down and change that to closest. And you'll have to do that for every texture in every material to make it sharp. And one other thing I would recommend changing in each material is by default, the materials in Blender don't have any kind of specularity or reflection in them, which is basically how Minecraft is in the game. So if you do want to add those kind of things, especially to your water or something like that, to give it a little more realism, I would recommend messing around with the specular and the roughness values in your material. And once you've done that, that's pretty much everything you need to know to render your scene in Blender. By default, this will all work in cycles, but if you do want to render this out in Eevee, which is Blender's real-time rendering engine, you will need to change a few more options because in Eevee, the, the textures brought in from Mineways won't work properly without a few more tweaks. Basically, the alpha transparency won't work, so you won't be able to see through the leaves and the trees, and any time you have like grass blades or seaweed or anything, flowers, they will have a black box around the texture. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a separate video that dives deeper into the settings for Eevee, as well as more advanced lighting and material techniques for both Eevee and Cycles. But other than that, yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Blender tutorials, and let me know if you have any other questions in the comments. Thanks guys, see you next time.